In this video, we're gonna take a look at why so many people move to South Dakota instead of North Dakota. And I promise you, it's not the typical reasons you'd expect, like crime and politics. South Dakota and North Dakota are solid red states and both have very similar weather, nice summers and springs with bitterly cold winters at times. Their crime rates are both in the mid 20s when ranking against all 50 states. The poverty rate is close with South Dakota being a touch higher. It's 13.6% versus 11.9%. Now, South Dakota is definitely growing faster. At the 2020 census, both states grew by 15%, with South Dakota being 0.8% higher. But then there was a shift. In 2021, South Dakota grew by 1.7%, while North Dakota grew by 0.15%. And in 2022, South Dakota grew by 2.8%, while North Dakota didn't grow. So why is South Dakota growing so much faster than their neighbor to the north? That's what we're gonna look at today. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Tourism. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, they're tourists, they're not moving there. Tourism lays the foundation for people to move there later. They come, they visit, they fall in love with the state and they move there. They tell their friends about the state, they tell everyone how they had a great time and this plants the seed in a lot of people to move to a place. South Dakota wins in a big way versus North Dakota when it comes to tourism. First off, let's talk about those colossal stone faces that everyone's been raving about since they were put up. Yep, Mount Rushmore. If you'd visited South Dakota and haven't taken a selfie with those four heads, can you really call yourself an American? Honestly, I'm obviously kidding, but in all seriousness, millions of people flock to this monument each year. And then you've got those otherworldly places like Badlands and the serene Black Hills. Of course, you gotta mention the still in progress Crazy Horse Memorial. That's a lot of postcards and selfies, folks. What do you got in North Dakota? Not much. I mean, you got Theodore Roosevelt National Park and the National Buffalo Museum. I would be surprised if they've ever had a line going out the front door of that place. Now, the Teddy Roosevelt National Park, yeah, that's kind of cool. I, I don't want to downplay that one or talk bad about it. I mean, it's kind of nice. It's a great place to camp. It's got the Little Missouri River running through it. It's a good place, but it's nothing compared to what's going on in South Dakota. Dollars and cents. Get ready for an economic roller coaster, and I promise no motion sickness. Let's talk about the good old South Dakota. Before you imagine those vast prairies and Mount Rushmore selfies, let me throw a curveball in here and talk about the money that South Dakota makes compared to North Dakota. South Dakota isn't just cows and scenic drives. This state is putting dollar bills in the pockets and jobs on the table. Two cities leading the charge are Rapid City and Sioux Falls. These aren't just blips on the dusty old map. They are growing metros teeming with with job opportunities and rapid growth. Here's a fun piece of trivia for your next Zoom party. Ever glance at a credit card bill and wonder where on earth does this thing come from? Well, Sioux Falls might be the answer. This city is known for its scenic beauty and its colossal finance hub. Major banks and financial institutions have set up shop here, turning Sioux Falls into the Wall Street of the Midwest. You know, that's one of those overused phrases. Whenever some bank or some kind of financial institution sets up their headquarters someplace or one of their headquarters, most of them have several, all of a sudden it's the Wall Street of whatever. Strawberry Patch, Arkansas is like the Wall Street of the Ozarks. So it's basic math. More jobs in a state means more folks packing their bags and heading to the Dakotas. And in this case, they're heading to the South Dakota. The cool thing I like about South Dakota cities is they're still maintaining their unique charm. I, you know, almost like, small town vibe, but they're getting to be big cities. They're definitely doing it better than North Dakota and people go where the jobs are. Now, if there's another one of those oil booms like North Dakota had some years back, this could all change. More than just flat land. North Dakota with its landscapes and picturesque beauty is a sight to behold. The bummer is South Dakota has that with some extras. When it comes to natural beauty, South Dakota often feels like that overachieving sibling that goes that extra mile just to make you look bad. Everyone knows a family that's like that. The parents have a lot of conversations with friends that go something like this. How are the kids? Well, Tom's great. He's working on his master's degree. How's Jerry? Well, Jerry's still in prison. He has some clarity issues. We're hoping he gets parole 
role next year, but we'll see. The limp is still there and he's still got a lazy eye, but we're hoping he can rebuild his life when he gets out. North Dakota being the Jerry in this scenario. Don't be Jerry. But beyond the expansive prairies, which both states have, South Dakota adds a dash of dramatic flair with its unique badlands and the majestic Black Hills. One more analogy and I'll stop. It's like Mother Nature turned South Dakota into a nature buffet, offering a range of scenic delicacies. North Dakota's like a Little League snack bar. And scenery draws people in. Why do so many people live in coastal areas? It's the coast, the scenery. Building the future. All right, buckle up. We're diving into the world of infrastructure. I know, I know. It sounds like a snooze fest, but hold on because cities like Sioux Falls and Rapid City, who we were talking about earlier, are turning this seemingly bland topic into something that you might actually care about. Let's break it down. First off, roads and highways. We're not talking about your grandma's pothole filling nightmare lanes. These cities are going full transformers mode, turning once congested messy roads into sleek, smooth highways of happiness. Ever feel the joy of driving? driving a brand new car. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but everywhere in these cities. And it's expanding to some of the smaller cities too. They're using all that infrastructure money that came out from the big infrastructure thing that Washington did two years ago, and they're running with it. Now onto the public spaces. It's honestly like these cities went on a renovation reality show and came out the winners. They're putting in new parks, green spaces are popping up where they didn't have green spaces. City beautification are becoming a big deal for South Dakota's biggest city. Cities. You already got Deadwood, Spearfish, and well, Sturgis isn't that great looking, but it's kind of got a theme. And in my opinion, when you compare the beauty of Deadwood and Spearfish, and then you go to their bigger cities, this is like five, eight years ago, something like that. They were There was a lot to be desired for the big cities of South Dakota. Well, they're trying to turn that around. North Dakota is doing things like that, but not on the scale South Dakota is. So why is this a big deal? When you work on your infrastructure, that will bring in people and businesses. Businesses bring in more people with more jobs. More people, more jobs means more taxes collected by the state and by the cities. Another thing that helps that and the residents in general is they're putting a lot of effort into getting high-speed internet to some of the more rural areas. The cities are almost completely done with that. I mean, the days of dial-up in South Dakota and North Dakota are almost over, but there still are some places and they're trying to eliminate that. I gotta admit, I do miss the days of actually having to dial into AOL and hear that screeching robot sound. It's almost like some weird song you loved in your youth. Internet again, though, will bring in people and bring in more jobs. Three years ago, we did a video on states with the worst high-speed internet, meaning coverage, and South Dakota and North Dakota were not doing good when it came to the number of households connected with high-speed internet. A couple years ago, they blew past Mississippi, Missouri, and Arkansas. So to wind that one down, infrastructure is big when it comes to drawing in businesses and people, and South Dakota's doing it better than North Dakota. No state income tax. That's right, South Dakota has no state income tax. North Dakota has a state income tax. Now there'll be all kinds of comments in the comment section below about, well, they got a higher, you know, sales tax and their property tax. There's always something like that. It breaks down to you're going to see more money in your check in South Dakota than you would if you lived in North Dakota. And that's all people are concerned with. Sure, there's other taxes and there's things like that, but when people see a bigger paycheck, they're going to move there over the other place. And it might not be logical, but if let's say your property tax is $3,000 more in South Dakota over North Dakota, but people will see, let's say, $80 more a paycheck in their check, they're going to move to South Dakota. It's not logical. It's just, it's how things are. Human beings are not always logical. Cultural events. When it comes to cultural events and festivals, South Dakota doesn't merely participate. It takes center stage, and boy does it when it comes to putting on a show. At the forefront of these events is the legendary Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. This just isn't a, you know, weird motorcycle rally, gathering, whatever you want to call it. This is an emblem of passion, freedom, and camaraderie. Each year, the quaint town of Sturgis transforms into a thunderous hub with roaring engines echoing in every corner of this town. Hundreds of thousands of motorcycles 
motorcycle enthusiasts converge, making it one of the largest rallies of its kind in the world. From gleaming Harleys to vintage classics, the streets become a mobile museum of America's finest two-wheeled vehicles. I've actually seen some three-wheeled vehicles there too. The economic ramifications of such an event is undeniable. Hotels are booked solid for, in some cases, years in advance. Local eateries see a surge of customers and even the smallest businesses benefit from the influx of tourists. But the true value of the rally and its events goes beyond mere dollars and cents. It's about the indelible mark it leaves on the culture and tapestry of South Dakota. And like the nature and things like that, people going on vacation, this is one of those things. People will move to Sturgis or the surrounding area or just South Dakota after going to the Sturgis motorcycle rally. I'm not talking about one or two people a year decide to call South Dakota home after attending this rally. Hundreds of people do it every single year, at least they make plans to, and over the years, thousands of people have moved to South Dakota because of this rally. Sometimes it's for business opportunities, and sometimes they just fell in love with the state. So in conclusion, South Dakota is doing a lot of things right that's drawing in people. They also have natural things that are drawing people in over North Dakota. I'm not saying North Dakota is a bad state. It's not. I'm just comparing the two and giving you reasons why more people are choosing South Dakota over North Dakota. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.